I mentioned in the previous video that the type definitions here were implicitly any, and this isn't great, we've got no type safety when working with our resolvers, or anywhere else in our application. We'll be using the GraphQL code generator to define some type definitions for us for our resolvers. This is something that we can run by passing a schema, and then telling the code generator all of the plugins that we want to run, and where it should store those types that are generated for us. So we can see here in this example that we generate a types.ts file with the plugin TypeScript, and it generates all of the different types for the schema that you can see here on the left. So this is something that we want to install inside of our project. And the particular plugin that we want to install today will be the TypeScript Resolvers plugin. If we scroll down to the example, Resolvers Signature, we can see here that we have the TypeScript Resolvers. We'll not be covering using the mappers just yet, but this is something we'll configure in a later video when we integrate our Prisma model. Let's first go ahead and install the dependency for GraphQL code gen CLI. Let's invoke the GraphQL code gen CLI using MPX. We'll need to answer a few questions about our application. At the moment, we are only concerned about building the API or the server aspect of our e-commerce app. I'm going to select from this list of what type of application I am building, the backend option. I'm going to deselect React. We'll add this in the future. Then I'll specify the path to the schema file, which is in schema.graphql. And then I'll select from the list the TypeScript and TypeScript Resolvers plugins that we'll add to the code gen. That's all we need right now for the plugins. Then we'll output the generated file to types.ts in the root of our project. I'll skip creating an introspection file at this point and we'll use the default codegen.yml file. And for the script that we want to add inside of package.json, we'll choose codegen. Once this is run, we'll need to install the dependencies in just a second. But if we open up the file explorer here, we can see that we have a new file, codegen.yml. You can see that we have documents null here. We'll update this in the future so we can automatically look for all of our GraphQL files to generate GraphQL queries and mutations using the code generator and the React Apollo Hooks plugin. For now, we can leave this as null and safely generate a types.ts file with both of these plugins. If we open the package JSON, we can see that we also have that code gen script inside of here. We'll now open the terminal and run npm install to install the dependencies. If we scroll down, we can see that we have these two dependencies at these versions installed. If you're following along, you might want to follow along using these exact versions. Once those have installed, let's then go ahead and run npm run code gen. This will generate a file in the root of our directory. And if we open the file explorer here, we can see that we have a new types.ts file in the root of our project. If we scroll down, we can see that we have some types created for us and exported from this file. We have our cart, query, cart arguments, and much more. You can also see that we have this resolver type, and this is what we'll use inside of our GraphQL API to safely type the GraphQL resolvers. Then let's go ahead and import the resolvers type from the generated types file. Then where we declare our resolvers, we can simply set the type of this to be of type resolvers. You can now see that the warnings for our cart resolver have now disappeared. The second argument when we hover, we can see is of the type string. Now, if we come into here, we can see when we go to declare a new ID response, we can see that is of the type string. And the same applies for total items. If we hover here, we can see that total items is of type number. So great, we've got some type safety inside of our GraphQL server to get going. That's all we need from the GraphQL code generator at this point. We'll see how something as simple as what we've just added benefits us when we write more resolvers for our GraphQL schema.